Hello everyone and welcome to Excellency Heavy League. I am Necrox and your host for the evening, but joining me on our lovely desk this evening on Excellency Heavy quarterfinals is DJ Mitch and Chris Tan. Obviously, joining me DJ, the one and only the prophet, the oracle, but tonight we have two special guests to break down some of our action. Please give a warm welcome to Mitch and Chris. Yep. How's it, How's going? it going? I'm Mitchell. Um... I am here to do some analysis for Lotus and Wyo. What's up? Go ahead, Crisp. Yeah, I'm Crisp. How's it going? It's going to be fun. It's uh, going to be a wonderful evening here as we have Lotus, the number four seed, uh, reigning second champions, if you will, taking on Wyo Boomers as they are looking dominant coming into playoffs. But before we get into the action, we got a lot to go over before we get on to the Rift DJ. I know you've had so many thoughts about this game coming into tonight. Yeah, I've got a ton of thoughts, uh, and I can see predictions already being thrown into the chat. Cute <laughs> right you all there, getting out ahead of the action. But uh, I am so thrilled for these two teams to go up against each other. They were so close at the end of the season. We saw some hiccups from both of the teams. We saw some good runs, but it looked to my eyes that they were both kind of rounding into form at the end of the season. So I think we are in for a treat here today. And, you know, I, I think we're all going to talk about it. We're all going to focus on it. But uh, no bigger treat than getting to see potentially five games of Palm Goat versus Alistair in the bottom lane. It is one of the shining matchups here in Excellency Heavy League. One of the best AD carries versus one of the best supports in the league. I'm just kidding. Palm Goat is up there with the likes of Alistair and just about everyone else you could think of. Heavy and beyond, these two have been star-studded throughout the split. Mitchell, I know you've had your eyes tuned in on Alistair, but I mean, Palm Goat is no slouch when it comes to supporting his team and moving across the rift. Yeah, I definitely agree. Palm Goat is... Definitely deserves to be in this conversation next to Alistair, right? Alistair getting first pro all team, not only this split, but last split as well. And Palmgo being in that conversation is very impressive. Um, I think something to look out for, though, is Palmgo does can sometimes play a more supportive style, where Alistair is definitely like a hard carry player. Yeah, yeah. hard carry and, and can move. And I was actually about to come right back to you, DJ, because these two can both be hard carries, but they don't always line up in the same way. Alistair, of course, playing more of the hard carry uh, potential throughout uh, the split, but Palm Goat has a couple different tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, and I think this sort of into the team overviews that we want to talk about here. So I'll start with the side uh, of the fifth seat here in Wild Boomers, and uh, that is that this team is extremely focused on early vision and priority around the map. Uh, Birdman, the support, also uh, an all pro team two player, uh, has the most assists uh, per game in the league at 15. He is everywhere in the early game. His XP is, is some of the, you know, is lower uh, on the support uh, charts in, in the league because he is roaming everywhere to try to support mostly Rosero in, in getting a lot of these early, uh, you know, vision priority, early objectives, you know, securing camps. Hanging around Trinity in mid lane is something they often do as well. Um, so it is a, a team that likes to prioritize that vision that sacks some of their resources to get really objectives and to keep Trinity safe because Trinity really uh, becomes the hard carry in team fights for the team. We mentioned Palm Goat often plays more supportive AD carries, a lot of Ash, a lot of Sivir, eight games of Sivir this season uh, for Palm Goat. And that's not to say that Palm Goat is not mechanically insane. He absolutely is. He's a fantastic mm -hmm. AD carry. It's just that the team sometimes asks him to pick some of these more supportive, some of these more utility AD carries. He can still carry on him, as you mentioned, you know, in the earlier matchup, game number one, uh, Alistair got 16 kills on a Kaisa. Game after that was absolutely shut down. An 8 1 and 8 Sivir performance coming out from Palm Goat. So all of that is on the table. That's how this YO Boomers team likes to play. And they like to look for that mechanical prowess and for Trinity's just mm -hmm. clutch team fighting to come through for them in the critical moments. Yeah, and I 100% I agree. Two great minds think alike, but I got to get an inside scoop here. We got a Seraphine player on the table, and I'm glad you mentioned Seraphine uh, and Birdman, his champion pool, moving around the rift. But there is one champion indeed that we might get a chance to see tonight, and it is the star singer herself. Chris Tan, I know you have some uh, foresight on what we may see from Birdman on this champion. Maybe could fit into a draft uh, as we put these pieces together for Wyo Boomers. Yeah, so Seraphine can fit into a lot of comps, and 
honestly, I don't think anyone should be able to like get this champion at all. It should be just be permabanned because it's just, it's just that broken. And Birdman has been pretty decent on it. I haven't watched too much, but it is pretty good. And we'll see if it'll be uh, impactful enough if it's picked at all. So we'll see. Is there anyone else that disagrees with the Seraphine permaban? Should there be <laughs> any some sort of pink floating encore stage possibility tonight? Or is, are we all just going, mark it out, X's all across, no one. If you're on red side, you got to ban it. I, I honestly think you could leave it up. Uh, I, I think there is okay. some flexibility. We, we've seen it uh, actually been let through, particularly in, in the TSM TL drafts that happened a couple weekends ago. You know, they let... Uh, Power of Evil get on that champion twice. I don't really know uh, how strong it is at support anymore. We don't see that a whole lot. Maybe Birdman has some secret tech up his sleeve, but I honestly think on red side, that is something you could leave open. I, I don't even know if Lotus would pick that up as a first pick if you're Wild Boomers. So I, I think it could be an option that you try to pick up in two, three. You know, if you do lose out on it and it does get picked up B1, I think there are counters for it at this point. I think there's a lot that you could play into it. So I honestly think it's something they could leave up and try to pick themselves on red side. Uh, and we'll see if it does become a power player in the draft. The other thing I'm actually interested to see is if um, Wild Boomers has any priority on Volley Bear tonight. Volley Bear is a champion that has been played five times by Papa Francesco. And now with that E uncapped against monsters in the jungle, uh, it's been played once by Rosero. I'd be interested to see if they actually use that as a flex to try to create some priority for their top jungle. The last time Papa did take this Volley Bear, he actually solo killed Accelerate when they were up against Lotus. Uh, so again, I'd be interested to see if they have priority on that and be interested to see what Accelerate's priority will be tonight. We know he can play tanks. We know he likes the Vladimir played it four times. You know What will be his role for Lotus Knight? Will he be a secondary carry or will he be asked to be more of a supportive player? And um, we got a specialist on that as well, Mitch. Again, just about yeah. to head straight towards you. I know you're a jungler as well. And uh, we did research on Papa versus Accelerate here in the top lane. We know Papa uh, can play carries, but he can also head towards that tank position as well. But if you're Rosero this game and you have to look at this champion pool and you have to look at the matchup, are you headed top side or are you just sticking down bot side Palm Goat versus Alistair? Are you giving any attention uh, to the island? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. If I'm the junglers in this series, I definitely head bot lane the entire time. Bot lane's where the dragons at. Bot lane's where your two star players at, and bot lane also has two heavy playmaking supports. Um, when it comes to the volley bear pick as well, I definitely agree with DJ. It's gonna be a great flex pick uh, in the jungle right now. It is right up there with likes of Hecarim and Udir. Super fast clear, really really powerful ganks, and scales like decently well as a tank, but just does so much damage. Like, if you caught the Lotus Invitational a couple days ago, like, Volley Bear is one-shotting people with full tank items. Uh, that's in the jungle, that's in the top lane. Honestly, in the top lane too, Volley Bear doesn't have a lot of bad matchups. It's really only ranged champions that mess with him. So, I think we're going to see some Volley Bear. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if Lotus even plays it right. I've never seen Accelerated play it. I definitely haven't seen mm -hmm. LZ play it, so... Um, that could be something that, yeah, it makes a difference in the draft in the series. Chris, same, uh, same mentions here, head straight to bot lane. Are you heading top lane to help this coin land in a certain side? Um, mostly uh, from what I've seen, Accelerate can play Vladimir and just scale and he can just play weak side. So I'm saying put everything in bot lane. I want to see Alice there or Palm Goat do the carrying. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm on the same side, man. I want to see Alistair and Palm Goat go at it. Get the 3v3s, get 4v4s. Shoot, bring the TPs down and get a 5v5 at two and a half minutes. It would just be a fiesta. I know we do have more to cover, though. And the one lane we really haven't gotten a chance to mention is a mid lane. And this one is... It's spicy. And when things get spicy, there's one guy I always got to turn to, and it's DJ. JVL has been propped up by a lot of people in the community as a potential carry for Lotus. In our opinions, hasn't been performing too hot, but it's his birthday today. Oh. Maybe he's got a new mouse or a keyboard or something that he's willing to whip out on the B day with the fat checks coming through. Uh, is JBL coming through tonight, uh, DJ, or is Trinity going to maintain control on these mages? 
Uh, yeah, I, I think that's honestly the big question. And, and, you know, you see over on the left side of the screen what the matchup is this, of the series is. I, you know, I think the, the headline matchup is, of course, Palm Goat Alistair. But for me, I, I think the bigger question and the more important matchup will be will be that mid lane because the gap's been really big between Trinity and JVL. You know, I looked across the stats. I looked at all four of the games they played this season. Mm -hmm. Wild Boomers are three and one. And even in the game that they lost, Trinity was 9-4-7 and seven on a victor. Strongest member of the team. Trinity has kind of bodied JVL in every single game they've played this year. Two Casio games can shut down the Lucian with that champion that JVL likes to bring out. It's been rough. And I think this has been sort of a, a, a narrative theme that we, we've been touching on with Lotus all season is Alistair is a huge carry for them. He should get resources. We want him to get resources. But in a five-game series against the best of the best in the league, against playoff opposition, can you really just say, we need to hope that Alistair can win three games for us? Like, can he do it? I think he can, but it's a big ask, right? And so what we're looking for from a lot of Lotus players is who's the secondary carry? Last year when they made their run to the finals, it was JVL. He came up clutch in those games. He offered a secondary source of damage, a secondary clutch source in team fighting that took some of the pressure off of Alistair, that allowed them to make that huge run to take down CGC. And he's going to have to bring that out again. We mentioned it's his birthday. We'll have to see if he does manage to bring it out. But in my eyes, if he cannot close the gap on Trinity, I think Palm Goat can do enough to slow Alistair down in enough of the games to keep him from full carrying. I think JVL absolutely has to step up for Lotus to beat Wild Boomers today. It's yeah. crunch time, boys. T minus 10 minutes on the countdown here till game start or at least draft start. And that means it's time to crunch some of the numbers. Get your stats pulled up. Get the Google Excel sheets going because we got to dive deep into these boys before we hit the rift. And I first want to start in the top lane. Accelerate versus Papa. Some of the stats differentials that we've seen. Uh, Mitch, I know you said you didn't want to go top side uh, between these two. Uh, and... Hey, you might not want to visit there as the jungler, but it's still going to be important all the same. We know Accelerate can scale very well uh, on picks like the Vladimir Papa willing to pull out the Gnar. Uh, the stat differential of these two, though, may prove a little bit different. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily like avoid top lane because the top lane is a very strong rule right now. Um, so when it comes to Accelerate or Papa, I mean, I'm pretty sure Papa solo killed Accelerate in the last time they played. Um, which could come out, right? It was the Kennen and Sonara matchup, very Kennen favored. So, I mean, that speaks to Lotus, you know, not giving counterpick to their top laner, which means that, like, if I'm Rosero and I have counterpick in top lane, maybe I do gank. Maybe I turn the tables, you know, everybody's expecting everybody to gank bot lane, right? I gank top lane, I get him ahead, then he TPs down to the bot lane. So, um, it's, it's, you can gank top lane, but by and indirectly just still help your bot lane anyways because of how powerful TP is. Okay, TP's potential there down to the bot lane as well. And again, that pressure can flow across the map. Chris 10 coming to you next, my friend. LZ versus Rosero in the jungle. LZ, a newcomer here for Lotus. Uh, to be fair, only seen a few weeks from him, but the Amumu has looked pretty solid. I'm uh, not sure exactly what the win rate was. I know it's one of his most played uh, champions. Uh, has five games on nunu with an 80 percent win rate though yeah. uh are we snowballing today or are we just going back to the curse of the sad mummy um yeah uh so judging from his insane win rate it might be a good uh pick for them here but we he is a very supportive jungler like Rosero, so mm -hmm. they do have a less like xp gain from like other junglers like baby powder or jimmy so they do want to, uh, I don't think it picks Ratter too much, but Nunu is pretty supportive, doesn't need that many, and can secure his objectives, uh, unlike Mitchell, but that is uh, something to look at here for LZ. <laughs> <laughs> uh doesn't give away any of his camps man he just he refuses all the gold's got to be there even with the jungle nerfs man he's still going to take the camp sometimes uh dj i know you've been working on these spreadsheets for about what four months now no i'm just I'm just joking with you waiting for the matchup though i can't wait to hear most important stats you've thought uh to throw to the audience before we get into game 
Um, you know, I've got some stats, but I think we're getting close and I'm, I'm less interested in the stats and just more interested in, in how these teams are going to play, you know, based on some of the things we've seen, uh, the numbers that I have, you know, I kind of have a, a, a sense for how I think this should play out. We'll have to see if it does happen. I, you know, if I run through the roles really quick, I tip this slightly to accelerate in the top lane. I think Francesco's a, a glue player for a while boomers, but I think accelerate has the flexibility to carry as people forget. He was a, a first team all pro uh, on anarchy fallen warriors last year. And he lost in the first round to wild boomers. They took him out. Uh, and so he has a lot of extra incentive today to come back and take these. It's the same five players, you know, nothing's changed. He knows all about these guys and he's not going to want to lose to them again. So I see that as a, as a big motivation for him. Elzy should have motivation to, to show up as the new player. He and Rosero play a super similar assist heavy play style. Uh, both of them almost have as many assists as Mr. Kiwiism, by the way, uh, per game, uh, fun, fun stat for you there. Uh, they're both at basically support levels. So I want to see if he can sort of outdo the man who's been here and, and done that before in playoff series. And then I think enough has been said about this mid lane and the bottom lane. Uh, these guys can all carry. I need to see JVL step up uh, and try to be the man he was for Lotus last season to slow down Trinity. Because uh, I, I, and I guess I'll, I'll kind of go out there with my prediction. If you can't slow down Trinity today, I think Wyo Boomers wins this series. All right, big man, DJ. Final thoughts before we step away to the analyst sets, Mitch and Crisp. Anything you want to get in our beautiful ears before we step away to get ready to cast? Yeah, I think uh, I got some faith in JVL. It's his birthday. Uh, there may be some picks that recently got really strong that were banned away from him a lot last year. We'll talk about it in draft uh, when we head there, but I think JVL is going to have some picks that he can pick up today that will turn the difference. And, you know, I think LZ might have some picks, too. Who knows? There's some secret sauce that Lotus could be building up. I don't know, but we'll find out. The insider information, man, it's too strong. I can't wait to find out. Even I don't know. But with that, we're going to step away to get ready for the cast. DJ and I, Mitchell and Crisp, are going to break down the draft and a little bit more analysis on the analyst test. Take it away, boys. We'll see you on the Rift.